Welcome in to Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Saturday, April 29th. It is officially day three of the 2023 NFL Draft. Your Jacksonville Jaguars, they've been busy on the offensive side of the ball. They've been busy trading down so far. Jaguars obviously land Anton Harrison in round one offensive tackle out of Oklahoma after two trade backs. I personally love that pick, had a top 10 grade on Anton Harrison, a young prospect, just turned 21 years old with all the athleticism and physicality in the world that you could be looking for. A lot of clean tape at Oklahoma, really good pass protector. Look, the Jaguars, they could not control the Cam Robinson news, but I think they handled it really well with the addition of Anton Harrison, who they believe can play left tackle, right tackle, or even some guard for them. At 61 overall, the Jaguars, after trading down from 56, they nabbed Britton Strange, and and this is a prospect that uh, the Jaguars did not show a lot of interest in. Britton Strange was surprised about the Jaguars' Uh, making that call in the second round. But the Jags, they did not want to leave a paper trail on Britton Strange. So uh, he had no clue they liked him. They got a lot of their information from Tyler Bowen, Jaguars' former tight end coach who also served in the same role at Penn State prior to coming to Jacksonville, a guy who recruited Britton Strange and knew him, and they leaned on some others as well to get that information. Britton Strange is a prospect they valued that they did not want uh, the rest of the league to know that they were interested in. So they bring him in. Peterson says Strange is the total package at the position. I agree in that he is versatile enough to play, you know, in line, in the slot, and in, in the backfield as an H back. So yeah, I, I agree there's versatility, but he was not the top tight end on my board personally. That would be Tucker Craft. And uh so so we'll see how that plays out. But look. Again, positional flexibility, experience in line, in the slot, and in the backfield. He's a really good athlete at the position with strong hands who can explode off the line and gets in and out of breaks as a receiver much faster than most tight ends do. A quality blocker both in line and in space. He's intriguing for sure. I had a third round grade on him, so landing him at 61 is a little bit of a reach, but it's not entirely egregious. Uh, I can't explain taking him over Tucker Craft at this point, but we'll see how that all plays out with him, and we'll be monitoring their, their two careers, right? Tucker Craft, Darnell Washington even, uh, with a Britton Strange, who enters uh, a tight end room that, that has Evan Ingram at the top of the room. You don't know his long-term outlook because the Jaguars and Evan Ingram haven't been able to agree on a, a long-term deal yet, an extension. He's still under the franchise tag, which he has not signed yet. Uh, But adding Britton Strange to that room with Evan Ingram, Luke Farrell, who is a Y tight end, and Garrett Prince, who is a move F tight end, I think Britton Strange can do a little bit of everything for you. And that has plenty of value at the tight end position. Enough value to warrant 61st overall? Again, not for me with Tucker Craft on the board, but I would caution Jaguars fans against just burying uh, Britton Strange in that pick because... I think in a Doug Peterson offense, this is a guy who is a tight end whisperer, a quarterback who knows how to use tight ends, and Trevor Lawrence. I would caution against burying this pick before you actually see Britton Strange on the football field or study his game at Penn State. Then at 88 overall, the Jaguars, they brought in Tank Bigsby, uh, who's a prospect they did show interest in throughout the process, a running back out of Auburn. He's a tough runner, young, young football player, just 21 years old. Uh, has good vision behind the line, good burst with the football in his hands after he gets the ball, lateral quickness to make uh, make defenders miss. He's got power and contact balance to run through tackles. A lot of creativity as well. Big time jump cut uh, can kind of get from here to there in a flash. Sees rushing lanes that most most backs just are not able to see and are not, not able to get to because of the lateral quickness and, and ability that he has there. For me, he was a great pick. I had a second round grade on on Tank Bigsby. Was he at a position of great need? Absolutely not. You have Travis Etienne. You have Jermichael Hasty. You have Dearness Johnson and Snoop Connor. But uh, for me, I think Tank Bigsby comes in and is immediately your 1B. You now have a legitimate two-headed monster in your backfield with Travis Etienne, who's one of the biggest home run threats at the position in the league, and now Tank Bigsby, who has some of that home run ability, but also brings a little bit more of that in-between-the-tackles running style, power running style um, to the table. 
So I think they're a, a really impressive two-headed monster in the Jaguars' backfield there. It's going to make the Jaguars more multiple. It's going to make them more flexible on offense. And he's going to give them someone who can grind out tough yards, um, whether that's at the end of drives or at the end of game, trying to pound teams into submission. So I'm a big fan of that pick. Um For me, obviously, I think what you're looking at here, if you're a Jaguars fan and you're unhappy with the first two days, uh, you wanted defense. You probably wanted the Jaguars to be more aggressive, to get more picks inside that top 100, that first three rounds. Uh, with all the draft capital they had, right? I, I understand that. And the Jaguars, they tried it to trade back into the third round last night. Uh, Trent Balky said it just didn't quite work out. We'll see how they address day three of the draft. They have 10 picks. And the Jaguars fans, you're going to want to see them address defense on day three. I've personally never seen 10 picks for a team on day three of the draft. Pretty unbelievable stuff. Never seen anything like it. Uh, but they have those 10 picks, including a lot of picks early on in, in, in day three at 121, 127, 130, and 135 overall. They've got four picks right there in that little cluster I would expect trades. I would expect multiple trades from the Jacksonville Jaguars today. Uh, The good news is there are still talented prospects on the board along the defensive front and in the secondary, right? At cornerback, you've got Clark Phillips, who's a prospect I would bang the table to trade up for right now out of Utah. Did not test extremely well. Doesn't have the height and length you're looking for at the cornerback position, but he's an absolute dog on the field. You turn on the tape, this is a guy who... Took it personally if you were throwing the football his way and uh, came away with a bunch of interceptions throughout his career. Played mostly outside at Utah. I think he projects more with his lack of length and lack of overall elite athleticism to to play probably um, slot at the next level. But Clark Phillips, I would absolutely bang the table for. Keely Ringo, a a big-time athlete at the position, struggles with change of direction, was at one point looked at as you know the top cornerback in this class by some. Uh, clearly not there anymore, but there's still some talent within that frame. Darius Rush is a guy who had a tremendous pre-draft lead-up with his senior bowl performance and then his performance at the Combine out of South Carolina. Cam Smith's teammate, a big, long, physical corner who has athleticism for sure. I think Terrell Smith and Corey Trice, they both fit that mold as well. Guys who have size, length, and athleticism. Ja'Cory and Bennett, Maryland cornerback, teammate of of Deontay Banks, obviously the first-round corner who the Jaguars traded out of. 25 overall, Deontay Banks gets taken by by the um, New York Giants. Trey Tomlinson, Ladanian Tomlinson's nephew, awesome, awesome athlete, really, really good cornerback. He's just five foot eight, uh, so he's obviously going to project inside to the slot at the next level. At safety, I think you have some slot options. Christopher Smith out of Georgia did not test well, but had an extremely uh, productive career at Georgia for the Bulldogs. Had a really good senior bowl where he showed the ability to cover these slot weapons. Um, So I think Christopher Smith could be in play for the Jaguars. Antonio Johnson out of Texas A&M. He has some jumbo slot and safety versatility. A lot of length, good straight line speed for an Antonio Johnson. Uh, Along the defensive front, Scott Matlock out of Boise State. This is a pass rusher who I think can align on the edge, can align on the interior for you. Uh, The Jaguars have shown interest in him. Really good athlete at the position. Jaqueline Roy, who I think was miscast a little bit in LSU's defense as a nose tackle tackle in 2022 you get him in a more penetration role at the next level I think you're going to like what you see Mora Ojomo out of Texas I've talked about a ton had a second round grade on him he's still available Tommy Adabare out of Northwestern is still available a really talented really athletic guy who played mostly defensive end for them in 2022 but kind of projects to be able to be an interior rusher you've got Isaiah McGuire out of Missouri who is a really steady really talented defensive end uh, has the length the size, the athleticism you're looking for, kind of a discounted version of like a Trayvon Walker um, type of prospect. Dylan Horton out of TCU, super disruptive all year, an explosive defensive uh, defensive end there. So I think there's plenty of options. You still got guys beyond that as well. I mean, Thomas and Coombe, uh, uh, Robert Beal out of Georgia, Jose Ramirez. There's a ton of pass rushers for the Jaguars to look at still. And could the Jaguars be... Um, be in on the veteran trade market. We'll see how it all plays out. The Jaguars, they have 10 picks. Their remaining needs, uh, 
up front on the defensive line. They need pass rush. They need a little bit of help on the back end at cornerback. And so we'll see how it all plays out for the Jaguars on day three of the 2023 NFL Draft. Thank you so much for tuning in here. Duval, hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. Let me know what you think about the Jaguars have done so far. Let me know what you're going to think that they're going to do in the future in day three of this 2023 NFL Draft. One thing I will leave you with, starting Monday, free agent contracts will no longer count against the compensatory um, pick formula. So when you look at why haven't the Jaguars picked up a veteran edge or a veteran nickel in free agency? Well, if they had done so prior to this point and they had paid any sort of uh, premium for that that prospect or excuse me, that that player, that free agent, that would have affected their compensatory pick formula of which they're going to have a bunch of compensatory picks in 2024. So now if they bring in guys after the draft, they will be able to avoid impacting their compensatory pick formula. And I think that does matter. So uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in here to Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. Hit that like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a show. If you're listening on your podcast platform of choice, please subscribe and review. Y'all have a good one.